Hello, welcome back to Business Statistics. Now today we're going to be covering probability distributions just in case you didn't get enough in Chapter 5 with probability. So probability distributions are going to be uh, covered in Chapter 6 and uh, what we saw in Chapter 5 were uh, variables uh, with, uh, which are discrete. Now in Chapter 6 we're going to look at continuous random variables that can assume any value. A uh, cumulative distribution function is known as uh, f of x and uh, what that uh, shows you is that the probability of x uh, doesn't exceed uh, the value of x. And so the way we would describe that formula is f of x equals the probability p uh, of uh, capital X, which is going to be your uh, probability of x, less than or equal uh, lowercase x, which is going to be the actual value of x. Now, if uh, the value of x is going to be between the range of, say, uh, a number a and a number b, then the way we would describe that formula is going to be uh, p uh, for probability of a is less than x, which is less than b, and that's going to be equal to the function of b minus the function of a. So I know a lot of formulas in this chapter, so bear with me. The probability density function then is described by the formula of the sum of the function of x times the density of x. Now, um, the, there is a good YouTube on this that you might want to check out uh, that describes this function in more detail called the probability density functions, probability and statistics by the Khan Academy. And in chapter five, we did look at probability of x value and now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the probability of an area uh, under the curve for that value. So uh, that's going to extend from A uh, up to B. Now the way we can do that is uh, we, we can go through it in Excel uh, looking at the formulas uh, of how to calculate the, that probability between the values A and B. So in this continuous uniform distribution formula, then we can see that f of x is going to be equal to 1 over that maximum range value of b minus the minimum range value of a. So if in our example, if our range is between 2 and 6, that means 2 less than x less than 6, where a equals 2 and b equals 6, it's pretty easy to formulate that the function of x is going to be 1 over the b minus a or 6 minus 2 which is equals 1 fourth or 0.25. Now for the mean we are going to use that same value mu and that's going to be equals to a plus b divided by 2. So in the case where our range is between 2 and 6 all we do is add 2 plus 6 together divided by 2 and we come up with 4. That's going to be our mean for that range. The variance, on the other hand, is going to be our sigma square, and the way we ca calculate that is we take b minus a square and then divide that by 12. So our sigma here is going to be 6 minus 2 squared, which is 16, divided by 12, which is going to be equal to 1.33. So not rocket science, uh, basically you just have to go through the steps of uh, figuring out what the range is and then calculating the formula accordingly. Now we uh, are going to get next into standardized random variables where uh, we are introduced to the formula z. Now for the z formula what we're looking at here is x minus uh, mu divided by sigma square. So uh, again we would plug in the values in order to get the values for uh, z. The mean in this case is going to be mu equals to the expected value of x. And our variance is going to be uh, sigma squared again, but uh, in this case it's going to be the expected value of x minus mu squared. So um, we, there is a, a useful video on the introduction to uh, linear functions by my owls learning which you might want to check out that goes more into uh, the Z formula in more detail. However, we are going to be uh, working with the Z formula going forward, so there will be plenty of exercises in later chapters. 
on z. Now the uh, next formula that we want to take a look at is the um, normal probability density function. Now when we looked at the density function here, what we want to uh, use is the formula 1 over the square root of 2 times pi times sigma, and the whole thing is then multiplied by e. The good thing is that e is an actual constant value, so uh, we are always going to use 2.71, similar to pi, which we will always use 3.14. So when you are calculating this formula, it's going to be a little bit easier than what it looks. Uh, you're going to take 1 over the square root of 2 times 3.14 uh, pi times sigma, and then the whole entire thing is going to be multiplied by 2.71. Now there is a, a good uh, YouTube on this one as well that describes this formula in more detail called the normal distribution, calculating probabilities and areas. Uh, on the Z table, and that's by Joshua. Now the next area that uh, we're going to cover in this um, uh, chapter is the uh, Z table. And the Z table you're going to become more familiar with as we go through the chapters, but what you do want to look at is um, the values of Z under the curve. So as you can see here, the Z table is going to give you values for Z on the left, and then what you want to do is look up uh, across to see where your uh, result will fall under. So remember that um, the area under the curve is actually going to be equals to 1. So anything left of the 0, that area is going to be 0.5. And the same thing to the right is going to be equal to 0.5 as well. So when you're looking at uh, the value of z, say that, for example, we want to find out if a z is less than 2, then we go to the left side of the table, look up the, the 2.0 value for z, and then um, find out what that value is. So here it says it's 0.4772. In the case that we were looking for z equals 2.2, then we would go down the z column, then scroll to the right, and find the value that is under the 0.2 column. So in that case, that value would change to 0.4783. Now, if you were given a, a homework problem where you need to find out the negative z value, then what we would do is we would take 1, because that's the area under the curve, minus that 0.4772 value that we had for uh, when z equals 2. And in that case, um, that would equate uh, to 0.5228 which is going to be the value that, uh, that you use for, um, uh, for the negative value of z. So um, there is an also useful YouTube video on this one that you can um, look up to uh, called uh, Distributions Probabilities by Stephanie Glenn. And uh, Stephanie Glenn actually has uh, quite a number of uh, good statistical videos that uh, can help you. Uh, on YouTube as well. I hope you have a good one and see you next time.